So I have a lot of favorite trees and this is one of them. This is Black Willow, Salix nigra. Very, very fast grower. Uh, really, really does great in wet conditions where I'm planting trees very frequently. We can see we're actually right next to a stream. This is Chickies Creek in Lancaster County and you can see all of these tree shelters around. Uh, last spring I planted all these with, with a lot of volunteers um, and uh, this tree has been holding on to the bank here. We did plant a bunch of black willow. Um, they just grow really really fast. They're very very hardy, very tough um, and that's why I like to plant them so much and that's why I like to see them around because I know this guy's gonna hang on for a really long time and even if it gets ripped out of this stream bank by floodwaters it might if it uh, ends up on some soil somewhere else, it might grow new roots there um, and just keep trucking. So one of my favorite species because it's just so tough, so hardy, um, and so adaptable to wet conditions. Um, so it is a specialist of floodplains and wetlands, um, and that is one of the reasons why it is so hardy and, and will just keep coming back is because it's very, very adapted to conditions where we're gonna get a lot of disturbance. We're going to get floods every once in a while. We're going to get ice scour here along the stream. Um, historically, there were a lot of beavers in streams and, and creating ponds and wetlands. And so uh, this species and others like it uh, were really adapted to those constant periods of disturbance. So they will grow back very readily from any stem being removed. Um, you could cut most of this down completely and it'll bounce right back and do abundantly uh, fine. Um, additionally, um, Again, it does grow very, very quickly. Um, it is not a very long living species. This is more of a pioneer. It'll uh, start growing somewhere where there aren't trees. It really likes to have open conditions, a lot of sunlight, um, and it'll live 100, 150 years or so, and then uh, it'll peter out. But uh, in that time, it'll create a lot of seeds um, and hopefully a ton of more black willow seedlings uh, will follow from it. Um, uh, so, uh, as far as identification goes, um, pretty easy to identify. There's not a lot of stuff that really looks like it. It always looks really scrubby. There's very few that I've seen that look nice, sort of our classic tree shape where there's one trunk that goes up and then, you know, the canopy above. Um, typically, they, because they grow out in full sun, uh, where there's not a lot of other species because they're a pioneer, they grow like this with a lot of main branches, um, a lot of branches really, really low. They're not um, uh, trying to fight for survival in a crowded canopy with a lot of other trees. They are just trying to take up a lot of space, do a lot of photosynthesis, and create a lot of offspring. So they don't really tend to grow up and out in a very kind of nice form like you often would associate with it with a larger tree. Um, so the bark you can see uh, is very very warty and wooly. Um, has all these sort of cracks and fissures uh, that will sort of grow over time. These kind of warty cork-like ridges um, will just keep getting gnarlier and gnarlier and growing out um, as the tree gets bigger and bigger. Even the, uh, the small, the young stems get kind of warty and knobby, uh, which um, I deal with a lot of these small stems because this is one of the species that you can live stake very, very well. Very, very good at responding to live staking. So uh, we have a tree talk video about that. Highly recommend you check that out if you're curious. But basically, um, in the dormant season right now, it actually, because it's a willow, it might do fine. But if I were to cut this branch off and then cut the top off, pound it into the soil right next to it, a new black willow tree would likely grow there. A pretty high likelihood that it would grow there. Um, and that's, again, because of those, uh, those adaptations, the quick response to, to rapid uh, disturbances and frequent disturbances is a specialty of this species. So the reason why I wanted to look at it today is because of these beautiful flowers. So we have these spikes of flowers. You can see they're this golden color. A um, uh, lot of pollen on each individual um, complex of flowers and this thing is just buzzing. There's a lot of bugs eating the leaves. Um, a lot of insects visiting the flowers. I don't know if it was on screen, but a, a swallowtail butterfly buzzed right by us right when I started. Um, but uh, so this it, it's now late May. Um, this is a really important time for our woody flowering species because there's not a lot of herbaceous species that have really started to flower just yet, uh, that are native anyway. Some of our invasive or non-native stuff starts to flower a little bit earlier. Um, as far as natives go, this is on the earlier side. Um, its cousin, the shrub willows, pussy willows, stuff like that, uh, they'll flower even earlier, but this is also a really important time uh, for these uh, nectar sources. Um, as far as the leaves go, this is one of the few species in the east that has this simple leaf that is lanceolate. 
like that. Um, we we'll also see it has a serrated leaf margin as well. So pretty easy to identify as a leaf. Um, and uh, then to throw in some more terms, we have uh, pinnate venation in there. Uh, if we want to just keep keep going with the with the. the technical terms. As far as timber uses, not super commercially valuable. This is actually one of the few willow species um, in the hemisphere that is used commercially. Um, it's not used for very high quality lumber, but things like wooden crates are sometimes used out of black willow, um, but medicinally very, very valuable. So Native Americans used to chew on the bark to relieve headaches, fevers, things like that. Um, it turns out that inside the bark is salicylic acid. Um, if you remember, this is Salix nigra, salicylic acid. Um, that is the uh, uh, very foundational component of ibuprofen, things like that. Um, and if you're having a headache, you might could try chewing on it, um, but you'll have to get down next to the stream probably in some pretty wet soils to find it. But beyond uh, nectar sources, really, really important food source for all insects, actually. Um, willows are one of the top uh, genre, the Salix genus, um, is one of the top uh, for insect herbivory. A um, lot, a lot of bugs really enjoy eating black willow. I don't know if the tissue is just more digestible, what the situation is, but uh, there are a lot of species uh, and, and genuses that will eat black willow leaves. Um, and so, really, really important food source for those. There's a lot of bird species that specialize in floodplain areas, and you're not going to see as many of them if you don't have black willow, partially because the black willow is feeding all the bugs that are then feeding those birds. Um, and I can go on and on and on about that. I've worked with a lot of these uh, bird species that you can see are very, very closely tied to willow patches. Um, it's really fascinating. Maybe I'll write a, write a story about that someday. Um, uh, just a really wonderful species um, that I'm abundantly happy to plant tons and tons and tons of every single growing season.